The day has finally arrived. I've finished playing through Sea of Stars, completed most of the optional post-game content, more on that later, and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you. I rolled credits on the game 28 hours in, probably would have been closer to 25 if you don't count the time I spent playing Wheels. And since then I've racked up 40 hours in this beautifully crafted pixel world and it's been a blast. So a very special thank you to Sabotage Studio for providing me with a copy of the game. This video won't have any spoilers about plot or late game areas and mechanics. Instead, I'm going to walk you through my experience playing section by section. From getting my feet wet in the early game, to running around picking up collectibles after beating the final boss. I thought a chronological approach kind of just made sense here because the game and my feelings towards it can be broken into a few different chunks, starting with the early game. Now I'll be honest, Sea of Stars does have a slow start. The whole first hour is basically a flashback and it's not until you're set free to explore that you really get to see this game's brilliance, and that is the level design. Once I got past the intro, I was hooked. Yes, there is a pretty linear path to follow, but the secrets hidden along the way, some of which you aren't yet able to access, made me realize immediately that I was in for a treat. Each area is colorful and weird and has an amazing song to set the mood. The combat in the beginning though got pretty repetitive pretty quickly. I think it does pick up later on, but as soon as I learned I could run past enemies and avoid combat, that's what I was doing. It's of course turn-based combat with optional timed button presses for a little extra boost, but the amount of attacks you have is very limited from the get-go and you only unlock a few combos throughout the entire game. The story in these early sections is what you'd expect. It's up to us to beat the bad guy and we're gonna need help doing it. So we run around the world finding powerful objects and relics, helping the locals out, all while fighting different bosses and their minions in order to hone our magical solstice powers. During launch week, I did see a few reviews on Steam just absolutely hating on the pirates, and while I agree that their humor is a bit too tryhard, there are actually some truly funny moments later in the game and you don't have to deal with the pirates much after about 5 hours. I also spent a good chunk of my time in the beginning playing this wonderful mini-game known as Wheels. It's a fun little strategy game that lets you gradually learn different characters' strengths and weaknesses as you face new opponents and unlock more figures. Now I'm just waiting for someone to build this board in real life. I know it's gonna happen, even if it's not actually functional. Someone's gonna do it, mark my words. So once I was done messing around with that and ready to get back to the main quest, how was the game holding up? At about 10 hours in, I can say I was still hooked. At this point, I had stayed up till like 2am one night because I couldn't find a good place to stop. The locations were still just as fun to explore as they were in the beginning, and now we even have a few special powers we can use to solve puzzles. And the dungeons. I mentioned in my Sea of Stars preview a couple weeks ago that I was surprised how much I liked the dungeons in the game. Yeah, there were one or two that were kind of lame and tedious, but overall, just like the towns and forests and swamps, they had a ton of variety and the perfect amount of exploring and rewards for doing so. And combat in this section actually got a little better. At this point, you have five playable characters versus the three you start with, and learning their attacks felt refreshing. For a while. Ultimately, it does go back to you using the same few attacks, but learning different enemies' magic weaknesses made combat a bit more puzzly and mentally stimulating. What I found not so great was the leveling up and the gear system. When your party reaches the next level, you can choose from a few stats for each character. HP, basic and magic attack power, and defense. But I never once felt like my characters had gotten stronger because the increases were so minimal and the enemy strength kind of just gradually increased along with my own. And finding or buying a new weapon for a character also didn't really change anything. Towards the end of this mid-game section, my hype was starting to tone down and the story did begin to drag on, but then came the twist. You start off the late game with a bang. I'm not going to share it here, but there's a pretty fun plot twist that freshens things up for a while. I reached this part about 20 hours in, and you kind of have that moment where you're like, whoa, how big is this game? After this, let's say, novelty wears off, I felt myself dragging out the end of the game, going back to early areas looking for secrets rather than just finishing up the storyline. 
Really, you can take a break during your quest anytime you want, but you might have to backtrack through a few areas if you're in the middle of a landmass and need to get back to your boat. Oh yeah, the boat. After teaming up with the pirates, you eventually get to sail around this very cute map in your boat. It's super fun to drift around and makes it feel like you're going on a big old adventure. But once you open up a lot of the map and start having to travel back to places you've already been to, it would have been nice to at least have a quest log or something. There were times when I would pick up the game after a few days and completely forget where I was supposed to go or who I was supposed to talk to. You do get this star placed on whatever island you're supposed to go to next, but some of them are pretty big and there were a few times I had to look up a walkthrough because I just couldn't find my next destination. By this point, I was also completely sick of combat again and finding these little skirmishes much more tedious than fun. The bosses throughout the whole game are pretty cool though, but I can't really show you that here. I do feel like the last few areas in particular were a bit meh compared to the first two thirds of the game, but I also was kind of rushing at this point so I could go back and explore. It's not that they're badly designed or anything, they definitely fit the theme they're going for, but how could anything be better than Coral Cascades or Brisk? And after finishing off the final boss, I only had about half the achievements unlocked, so I knew I had a bit more work to do. Ultimately, I decided that I'm not going to get all the achievements, particularly because one of them involves making the game a lot harder and then going back and beating a bunch of the bosses all over again. But there are a surprising amount of little quests and things to do even after you save the world or whatever. The story of Sea of Stars is already starting to fade from my mind, but what I won't forget is how cleverly crafted these levels are and how smartly some of these collectibles are hidden. It's almost like they did some anti-front loading, where instead of loading up the front of the game with their best content, they spread it out, putting the most memorable stuff more in the middle and way at the end. And I have to say, I'm still surprised that Sea of Stars is only sitting at 87% positive reviews. I'm suspecting that most of these people probably didn't make it more than a few hours into the game because there is a lot to love here. I guess now's a good time to say that I only had one technical issue and that was the game freezing in the middle of an optional boss fight. It was super weird, but I just shut the game down and reloaded my most recent save. I played on the Steam Deck about 80% of the time and I honestly think handheld is the best way to go if you have the setup for it. Okay, this review is getting pretty long and I have some other games I want to play, so I'm gonna end things here. I know this wasn't really a traditional review, but it was the best way for me to organize my thoughts and kind of take you through my journey playing Sea of Stars. See you next time!